Hello everyone, welcome back. This is part 17 of the design patterns tutorial. In this session, we will discuss what is adapter design pattern, implementation guidelines of adapter design pattern, and we'll take a look at an example to implement adapter design pattern. Please refer to the previous parts of the tutorial before proceeding. As per the Gang of 4 definition, adapter match interface of different classes, which means an adapter allows two incompatible interfaces to work together. In software engineering, the adapter pattern is a software design pattern that allows the interface of an existing class to be used from another interface. It is often used to make an existing classes work with others without modifying their source code. Leveraging on adapter pattern improves reusability of older functionality. Having said that, adapter pattern works as a bridge between two incompatible interfaces, which means this type of design pattern comes under structural pattern as this pattern combines the capability of two independent interfaces. Now the question comes, when do we need to choose adapter design pattern? We need to choose adapter design pattern when a class needs to be reused that doesn't have an interface that a client expects. Also, when we need to work through a separate adapter that adapts the interface of an existing class without changing it. Also, we need to choose this pattern when client don't know whether they work with a target class directly or through another adapter with a class that doesn't have the target interface. I'm sure this is confusing at this moment, but don't worry, we'll take a look at this with an example. Now, when we talk about example, the perfect example of an adapter design pattern is the AC adapter. The AC adapter knows how to deal with both sides, isn't it? It acts as a middleman between two sockets. That is a perfect example of adapter design pattern. Let's now take a look at the representation diagram of adapter design pattern. The client class over here is used to communicate with the adapter class that implements the iTarget interface. In other words, this is the class used for creating the instance of adapter class. Now, the iTarget here represents an interface created to make client achieve its purpose. Whereas the adapter class implements the iTarget interface and inherits the adaptee class as well. Hence, we can see that this works as mediator between iTarget interface and adaptee class. Finally, the adaptee class contains the main functionality that a client is expecting. Let's now switch to Visual Studio and understand the adapter design pattern with a very simple example. To save some time, I have already created a console application which has employee and employee manager classes. Employee class has properties of employee ID and employee name. This is basically a very simple employee class. Now, the employee manager has a method called get all employees that returns all the employees as XML string. Before returning the employees, we assume that the employees are already present in the system. To simulate that, I have created few employees in the constructor of this class. Now it looks all perfect till this moment. What if I need details related to employees in JSON format instead of XML format. To achieve that, I cannot use this method directly, but somehow I need to leverage on this method to get the employee details in JSON format. That means we need to create some more interfaces and classes that a client can leverage on to reuse the existing classes and return the required output. For that, this employee manager need to become an adaptive class. I repeat, this need to become an adaptive class and we need to create adapter 
to combine two incompatible requests and responses. To achieve that, let's create an interface and name it as iEmployee. Right click on this project, add new item, choose an interface and name this as iEmployee. This iEmployee interface returns the get all employee details in the form of JSON, which means I employee interface serves as target for the client to interact. So let's create a method which returns a string which is get all employees. Let's also make this interface as public. Let's now create a new folder, right click, add new folder, and name this folder as target. Let's move this I employee into the target folder. It's not mandatory to create folders and move these classes or interfaces under these folders. I'm following this folder structure presentation to make this example simple to understand based on our representation diagram. Let's right click and add new folder and name this folder as Adaptee. As mentioned earlier, the employee and employee manager are Adaptee over here. Let's move this class file under Adaptee folder. Let's click on OK. So we now have Adaptee and target related classes. We need to create adapter related classes. Let's right click on this project, add new folder and name this folder as adapter. Let's right click on this adapter folder, add new item and choose a class and name this class as employee adapter. This employee adapter class implements the employee manager as well as inherits the iEmployee. Let's make this class as public and let's override the method of the employee manager. If you notice that we have created this method as virtual method. So let's override this virtual method public override get all employees. So let's say string get all employees. Look at that. It has pre-populated the details. Instead of returning the base.get employees, we need to change the XML to JSON and return it back. Let's see how we can do that. Let's create a variable called string return XML equal to base.get employees. Now that we have this XML, we need to convert this XML to JSON. Let's create XML document, name it as doc equal to new XML document. Let's resolve these issues by using system.xml and let's load this written XML into this document. Document.load XML and say written XML. Now we can use the Newtons of JSON over here and convert this XML to JSON string. Let's say JSON convert dot. Let's resolve this issue by using Newtons of JSON and say serialize object by passing this document comma JSON serialization formatting dot indented. We need to return this JSON string as per the requirement. So let's return it back. Let's format this method. Now that we have created Adaptee, Adapter and Target related classes and interfaces, let's invoke the adapter from the client. Let's switch to the main program. To save some time, I have already kept the code ready in the client program. Notice that using the target interface, which is iEmployee over here, we are creating a new employee adapter class and invoking the get employee details. Now let's run this application and step to the code to see if we are able to retrieve the JSON details of the employee. Let's just put a breakpoint over here. Let's run this application. 
let's step into the get employees notice that we are calling the base.get employees and returning the xml file and the xml document which we have written over here is loading the xml and using the json convert we are converting this xml into a json format notice that we have successfully converted the xml into the json format with this we have successfully connected two incompatible classes and interfaces using adapter pattern i hope now you have a good idea about the adapter design pattern in the next session we will discuss bridge pattern till then thank you for listening and have a great day